Titanfall is an epic game about small scale and large scale battle. It's got infantry combat, so you've got the small scale pilots. They're like infantry ground forces and they can run on walls, they can double jump, highly maneuverable. And they need that maneuverability because the large scale epic combat is the Titans. They're these big machines of war. They're also very agile and the Titans are called down by the pilots. So the pilots call down their Titans, they get in and they have these huge immense battles. So you got Titans fighting Titans, pilots fighting pilots. But the thing that makes it really exciting is the crossover combat when they fight each other and you get pilots and Titans all mixed up together. What sort of challenges are you facing when creating a balance between what would seem like such unmatched opponents? It's a huge challenge because typically in a shooter you just have one scale of warrior fighting against it themselves. But in this game it's asymmetric but balanced combat and that's a tremendous challenge to make the map feel right when you're big and the map feel right when you're small. It's also really exciting because when you see something from different perspectives it looks different and unique and it's like a different experience whenever you're in those different perspectives. Well, I know Titanfall has won a lot of awards already, but we'd like you to give the Good Game Award for Best In Show. Oh, that's awesome. So congratulations. Thank you so much. I really I can't wait to play the game. Thank you. Well, Nintendo may not have had a press conference this year, but I think you can see they still have a massive presence at E3 and a really strong lineup of games, so let's check some out. <laughs> it's all different kind of moves and stuff. Yeah, like that's what's fascinating. You can have your map here. Whoa! <laughs> the walls! Whoa! Damn those banana peels. Somebody left those in the closet spot. Oh! Uh, Who came uh, first? <laughs> Who came first? I came first. I thought I had it, and then the hang glider went way off. You thought you had it, but you didn't. Uh, the, uh, the evade just at the right time. Northcrest Manor. Someone in here rests the Baron's precious heirloom. It's up to the player to define their play style. We don't want to tell you how to play. Uh, so we just set up some scenarios and you kind of have to get creative. How, how are you going to you know, get past these guards? It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be a different kind of challenge. If those scum break through the gates of Northcrest, that's where they'll fall. It is a stealth action adventure which means you can play it in a lot of different ways. Uh, for me, it's about bringing, uh, a lot of other games have, you know, stealth as a side, a little brother kind of thing. I think the, the fact that we have the big brother is the stealth. And even if you want to play aggressively, you have to work with the shadows to make it work. I think that combination is what really makes this, uh, this brand stand out. opportunity with the story is that we get to see Batman becoming who we know he will but <clears throat> also taking him back to this earlier part of his career where he's very used to being the best at what he does so one of the things we're showing is how Batman can use these sensors in his cowl and the back computer back at the back cave and a network connection between the two to analyze various pieces of evidence that he finds in these different crime scenes and then through, uh, through the back computer, you can simulate what deposited that evidence. And we see this visual rewind of what took place. And then you'll find other pieces of evidence and contribute more and more to the scene until eventually he figures out exactly what took place there. And then Batman can follow up and bring the guilty to justice. Nice of you to drop in. Wolfenstein is a first-person action-adventure game which uh, is uh, focusing heavily on the action part. Uh, but we're trying to get in stealth as well. And we have a lot of exploration parts as well where you need to find uh, health upgrades and such. And uh, there might be alternative ways as well to play out different kinds of scenarios. I really like the leaning system. So you need to, uh, you can lean up, down, left, right, uh, like if you're holding the turrets, the laser turrets, and it just creates this really cool dynamic flow to it and you feel safe and in control. <laughs> It's 
一番注力している点は、so the, uh, Our game takes place in this sort of new world that we've done for Call of Duty. It's a fallen America. Uh, there's been a geographical sort of change to the southern part of the United States. And now, much different than we've done in Call of Duty before, you and your squad are now the underdogs. It really sort of changes the mentality, I think, of what we've done before. But, you know, for us, it's always striving to deliver this new gameplay experience, giving players this adrenaline rush, this roller coaster ride. And one of the great things we're doing with the squad is they're a deeper part of the story than we've ever done before. And I think as we move into next gen, the deeper storytelling we'll be able to tell will be different than what we've had before just in terms of technology, the level of detail that we have in the characters. So we're doubling the amount of bones we're able to do from current gen to next gen just in the face of the characters. That's going to allow for a deeper emotional sort of performance in the face, the articulation of the bones, how the characters perform, and then tie that into the now the fact that we actually brought in this Hollywood Academy Award winning writer named Stephen Gagan, who wrote Traffic, he wrote, directed Syriana. You now have the squad that is a deeper connection to you as a player than we've ever had before in Call of Duty. So we had the guys from the Navy SEALs come in, and it was a dog trainer for the Navy SEALs, and he said, look, Here's what we do with these guys. They have these uh, vests that they put on that cost like tens of thousands of dollars. They have this camera on behind it that actually pops up as you're using the dog. And you can see what he sees. And through this sort of tablet that you can actually interface with the dog, he can hear what you're hearing. He, you can hear what he's hearing. He can sniff out enemies. He can actually bark to bring enemies out of cover. And then he can also engage with enemies based on your commands through the tablets. The technology that we've been able to take with Sub-D, the placement map, and lighting, just the level of detail we can actually get in the environments really stands out to me as something that's a cornerstone for what we can do in COD. You know, the team at Infinity Ward, they're platform agnostic, but for them, they want to make the best Call of Duty game possible on every platform. So this is a tough one, but uh, I have to say the best uh, K9 FPS integration with advancements in Fish AI Award has to go to uh, Call of Duty Ghost. So congratulations. We're honored. Thank you very much. Thank you. The team is going to be really thrilled about this. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> Techland are known for, for Dead Island. This is your new IP. Uh, why did you decide to make another zombie game? They wanted to approach the genre in a new way. They, they started thinking what was missing, what people didn't see in those games. What would the world be like between night and day? How can we make it uh, something that people think about all the time when they are out during the day scavenging, building weapons, preparing for the night? If the whole world is like that, if the NPCs, your enemies, think in, uh, think in those terms, it makes the whole game uh, more interesting. Can you tell us a little bit more about the free running and how it's incorporated to the game? That was something that was missing to us in the zombie genre. This is the perfect scenario to, to showcase the advantage of being human and alive as opposed to just shuffling on street level and, and you know, looking pale. This is not something you do to show off to, you know, this is not a sports competition. This is a survival skill and our characters are built, trained that way. But we want the free running to mesh seamlessly with combat, with exploration. Because what's the point of having a sandbox open world if there are places you cannot go? So this time it doesn't work that way. If you see a building, you can run all the way towards it. You can climb, you can see what's inside. that we're going for 64 players uh, on the consoles for the first time and also 60 FPS uh, so this is huge you know this is the first time you will be able to get those epic 
battlefield moments where you have uh, tanks, airplanes, and uh, vehicles all over in a sort of 64-player battles in the console audience. They want to take the commander out of the game and have him be sort of a commander full time, ordering your squads around. And we wanted to make like a full proper experience. And you know, and we also wanted to be able to bring the commander to tablet. So now you can take the commander experience with you while you're on the bus. So you can be on your way at work, or even better, at work, playing commander uh, and still be interacting with the uh, full experience of battlefield. Exciting. We're getting special access. You can sit in the car. Now, this car belongs to Mr. Mc McLaren. Mr. McLaren himself. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I think it suits me. 